Hi guys, welcome back. It's been so long. Um, probably like six to eight months. Uh, a lot's happened, a lot's changed. We're not going to go into this year because like, I tried to do my hair and it just does not want to work with me. I have to. <laughs> um, so anyway, welcome back to Stitch by Stitch Recovery or welcome to Stitch by Stitch Recovery if you're new. I'm Harriet. I cross stitch occasionally. No, like at the beginning of the year I was cross stitching pretty consistently but during the May to August period I really didn't stitch at all. Um, work got insane. I just, I just didn't have the mental capability to go through and stitch all the time. I'm wearing a dress. I am wearing a crop as well. So I'm not like showing too much, but yeah. Um, things are going pretty good. If you see the bruises on my arms, just don't worry about them. I had a bone marrow biopsy yesterday and it's like completely destroyed me for some reason. I was supposed to work today, but I took it off because I just wasn't feeling well. And then I, for some reason, felt like I had energy to do a floss tube. And this is going to be a whip parade. But first, because I'm jumping ahead, because that's what I do. Um, I had a massive finish the other week. And when I say massive, I, I mean massive for me. I don't really finish much. I've had two finishes this year and they were within a space of two weeks or so. The first one is, was actually a gift for my best friend who'd had a baby. And I am going to perhaps insert a picture if I remember. I don't know if I took a picture of it actually completed. Um, but it was a dinosaur birth sampler thing without being like a birth sampler. Like it had some dinosaurs on it and then his name and that's all. I actually framed that myself. So if I can find a photo, I will put it in. If not, I probably won't because I might forget. Um, but the other finish I had was actually... Da, 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 da. my Celtic Spring Conversion, which I converted her into being blues and I wanted it to be more like an apricot peachy colour, but that didn't really come out as well as I had hoped. I do prefer, like, so I love it. There's like a million beads on here. Nothing like, em not Emerald Mermaid, Enchanted Mermaid. Um, like Belinda Aussie Stitcher finished, but there's like, there's a lot of beads on this. She was probably like done apart from her beading within four months maybe. And then the beading just, I didn't want to do it. And then I got the urge to bead and she was done in three days. Well, three days of stitching. I think it was like a week and a half after I was like, I'm going to finish this. Um, so yeah, here's a bit more close. I'm not that happy about the way the hair turned out. I didn't convert the hair. The, ha the hair is as charted, but I converted pretty much everything else apart from the sleeve. I do love the way the border turned out. If I went, if I could go back and do it, I'd re, I'd find a different blue for the darker blue. So this blue, I think I do in a bit more of an eggshelly, darker eggshell blue. Periwinkle blue, maybe that's the word I'm looking for. Just so it blended a bit more with this blue. Um, I am planning on starting the summer one and I'll be converting her as well. I'm not a massive fan of the colors that she used for this. This is Celtic Spring by Lavender and Lace. I didn't actually say that. Hopefully I'll be good with my editing and I'll have it like up here somewhere. Probably won't, but we'll see. 
Um, but yeah, I, I do actually really love her. I do like the way she turned out. The, um, the summer conversion that I'll be doing, there's like a rose conversion where the dress is like, it starts off with this darker maroony sort of color. Um, and then goes into a bit lighter pinks. But yeah, overall, over, overall, I'm quite happy with this. It is on Tyco by Picture This Plus 18, no, not 18 count, because we don't like 18 count, 16 count Ada. So, you know, you can do a fancy lady with all the beading on Ada. And honestly, like, I, I really like her. She's very pretty. Her hair looks better at a distance, I'm going to say. Up close, it just looks like she's got her roots dyed the wrong way. Um, but yeah, that is my massive finish. Massive for me, anyway. Um, now, fair warning, this video, because it's a whip parade, is going to involve lots of crinkling, lots of rustling, maybe even some bead noise. So if you don't like that, then there's no point in you being here. It's about to start raining, so I might have to film this in segments. I'm ho ho hoping not to. <laughs> there was a hair. I'm not, not used to shedding. Where is all this hair coming from? Um, so yeah, that was my finish. Now we're on to my whips. And honestly, guys, I have a massive stack here. Like this is the first one that I'm going to show you. They're not in any particular order. I haven't counted them. I'm not sure if I will be doing, what's it called? No, no, no new starts 2021. I just don't know if I want to commit to that um, at the moment. I think I probably could. I have enough to keep stitching on all year and it'd be fine. Um, I'd, if I did, I'd have to have another five, six new starts, I think, before the end of the year. And considering I'm thinking of doing Finish That Stitch December, or, or Finish That Shit December, depending on which one you want, or if you have manners, um, yeah, it just depends. So, most of these I don't have the printed out pictures of because some of them are from Etsy, some of them I've just lost the pictures completely. <laughs> um, that's a bit better. Um, so I will insert pictures somewhere, probably the whole page. Uh, so the first one, I don't actually know who this is by, but it's called Pooh and Friends, I think. And it's going to be a Winnie the Pooh stitch. It's two over one tenth stitch on 32 count even weave. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, I have, as you can see, plenty of fabric. I just don't know how tall it's going to be, so I haven't cut the fabric yet. I probably should have stitched it so it was like going that way, but you live and learn. It's fine. It's just, you know, what, what really else am I going to use 32 count, um, easy count Lugana for? that's fine. Um, it's called Pooh and Friends. It's 10th stitch. That's all you really need to know. Um, oh, my second one is a whip that hasn't actually had any attention this year. I feel a bit guilty for that. I keep going, oh, I need to give you attention and then I start something else. Um, it's The Reader by Joan Elliott. She's very pretty. I do love her. Um, yeah, I, I need to pick out her nose and redo it because her nose is very flat. Like it just, it just needs a bit, a bit more structure to it, I think. Um, it is on, whoops, 28 count Ariel by Picture This Plus. And it, it's very see-through, like you can see my hand through the back. Um. But yeah, she's not had any work on her, so I can't really comment on her at all. Put that there. 
Um, the next one, I think I've put in a grand total of like three stitches in. The next one is, I do actually have the picture for this one. Waiting for Ships by Mirabilia. In a project bag, my, oh, that's the pattern. In a project bag my mum made for me. Because she's nice and lovely. Can't find the stitching on this piece of fabric. It's not even on a Q-snap, like. Which way does that go? Not that way. <laughs> um, so, at the moment the stitching's all blending in. You probably can't see it very well due to the fabric. I would tell you what the fabric is, but I don't actually know. I think it's a Colour Cascades because it doesn't smell like pole stitches does. Um, so I'd say it's a Colour Cascade. And it, it doesn't have the look of a Pictures Plus or a Colour and Cotton. So yeah, that one's that one. I started that one with friends this year and I just didn't... Who did I start it with? Belinda? Aussie Stitcher, maybe Sarah from My Stitching Kingdom. If you guys haven't checked out Sarah from My Stitching Kingdom, hopefully I'll remember to link her below. You guys should. She's amazing. She's so nice. She's like one of the most wonderful people you will ever meet. Um, I cannot, like, she's, she is awesome. Just go and, oh, don't, don't look at the bruise. Just go and check her out. She posts so regularly. Like, I don't think anyone will even watch this because, like, I just don't post anymore. Um, but, yeah, if you're looking for a nice floss tuber who's no-nonsense, has great stitching, and actually, like, gets stuff done, Sarah is, Sarah is your go-to. The next one's Rhythm. She just needs beading, and then she'll be done. I just haven't got around to beading her. I do like her though. She's very pretty. She is on an 18 count opalescent white fabric from Witchell. Nothing special. I think she's my only opalescent fabric too. And she should have been done ages ago, but she hasn't been done because I have been doing other things. <laughs> oh gosh, just don't look at my arm. Um, so the next one is Hang In There Kitty. Why am I doing it that awkwardly? Hang In There Kitty by Dimensions. I think I have frogged this piece more than I have stitched this piece, honestly. Um, which is why he, he is another one for finish that stitch December. But he just... Just haven't been very well, very capable of stitching on him for some reason. I'm not sure why. It's not like he's that hard to stitch, but like I, I think I frogged over 2,000 stitches on him, and he's not big. Like you, you saw the size of the fabric. He's not big. I shouldn't have had to frog as much as I did, but I, I did. Um. The next one, should have been counting, but oh well. The next one is the Serenity Prayer, and I basically called this done, and I shouldn't have, because I haven't even finished the words. Um, so it's just that there. I need to finish difference, and I think I will end up putting the rest of the verse on. Um, which says the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And living, living one day at a time, enjoying, or might be enjoying one moment at a time. Maybe. I don't have a picture for that. I don't even know who this design was by. It's just a very simple text design but yeah I mean 
I'm not a massive fan of stitching letters, which is why this one hasn't been finished. But, you know, I, maybe like a weekend and I could finish it if I put in the effort. So, let's see, let's see. Hopefully come December, I will have quite a few finishes to then, ooh, I have to keep that, that's not good, um, to keep, to show you guys. The next one, is a whip that I don't think many people actually know I have. Um, mainly because I haven't stitched on it all year. It is, it's heavy. I didn't realize it was this heavy. It is Alpine Chatelaine. And it goes this way. That way. Um, I really should stitch on this more. It's not a great one if you've got competition stitching though. Um, it's more of a one that you stitch on when you don't want to or don't need to count. Or you can just can't, like stitch for a full weekend and then count after that. I think it's just on a raw linen. It, it's, I got the kit from European Cross Stitch and I don't remember what linen came with it like it was an all-inclusive kit um, like everything I do have another two Chatelaines kitted up I don't know if I will start them before next year I probably won't one stitch one difficult stitch is enough um, the next whip is in a gorgeous cute super cute little bag with a super cute little oh gosh I have, to, have to move forward super cute little hedgehog charm that's there um by vicky gable at stitch and button or if you look at your um invoices from stitch and butt best name ever um, oh, this is, I think this is a crowd favourite, honestly. <laughs> um, it has had a lot more work done on it since you guys saw it last. Well, of course, because it's been like eight months. Let's face it. It's A to Z of dinosaurs. So now I have Brachiosaurus, Coelophysis, half of Diplodocus. I don't even know how to say the J one. It's like Juvaraptor or something. Gerana Vata. The Iguanodon, the Kentrosaurus, and the Lystrosaurus. No, Lil Lilian Turanus. Guys, I couldn't say Maleficent before. <laughs> I was Marco Poloing someone. And I, I could not. <laughs> she said it before me. And then I went to say it. And I was just like. Ah, M. M. Mo. Mo. So I've probably jinxed myself now. And I won't be able to say it ever again. That is on Frozen, Fa Frozen Fractals by Fabrics by Stephanie. And I do love that fabric. I do love that fabric. Um, so yeah. I have to get back to stitching on that one eventually. Again, that's not a good comp like challenge stitch piece because every dinosaur has at least 11 to 16 colors in it. And it's just ridiculous. It's, it's too much confetti. It's one you have to be really switched on for. And that's why I've actually gridded. It's my only piece apart from the Hades and the full coverage Pooh Bear that is gridded. And I, I need the grid lines for that one, definitely. I wonder if I could put it in Pattern Keeper. Mm. Would that help though? It might, it'd get rid of, <laughs> be, be going to have a drink for ages. It might get rid of the, um, cause some of the dinosaurs are like split over three or four pages. It's really frustrating. Trying to put it in Pattern Keeper, even if the colours don't come through properly, might help. I'll see. I'll see you after this. 
Um, so the next one is on another project bag made by my mother. Um, is on Fathoms Below by Fabrics by Stephanie. And this is when I was like, kind of, what's that word? It's not tenting, it's full cross, kind of parking, that's the word. Um, but this is Mermaids of the Deep Blue. I don't think I have stitched on this one at all this year. I do want to get back to this one. She's very pretty. Well, they're very pretty. When you work on them. Um, I have so many whips now. And I just keep adding to them. It's just a bit ridiculous. But Mermaids of the Blue by Mirabilia. Uh, the next one is Daisy. And I do actually have the thing. So I started this one with Vicky from Reading and Stitching. Also headmistress of magical stitches and Sarah from my stitching kingdom. I keep wanting to say my animal kingdom, but it's not. It's my stitching kingdom. My animal stitching kingdom. My stitching kingdom. It's fine, guys. They don't watch me, so it'll be fine. I won't get um, teased about this video at all while I'm on virtual stitches. Because I want to say, I want to say it goes this way. Um, this, it, this, this fabric says it's a 32 count. Picture this plus. I'd like to say it doesn't feel like a 32 count. Picture this plus. It feels more like a 34 or 36 count. Um, but the color is Mercedes. I love the color. It's just the holes are very tight. I was thinking about restarting that one. I thought I hadn't done quite as many stitches as I had. But at the moment it's my, I'll keep it for a while, see how I feel. Um, now we get to the projects that are actively being worked on. And there is to be no judging about the number of Q-snaps I have. I don't like taking projects off Q-snaps. I, I just don't like it. I don't like putting projects on. I don't like taking them off. So I just buy more Q-snaps for more projects that I want to work on. As long as my parents don't know how much money they cost, it's fine. Um, so this is on an 18 count Mystic Ada. I think it's by Picture This Plus. And I don't like 18 count, so this may also be one, and I don't know whether this is upside down or not. I'm going by the way the needle minder is going. Um, this is going to be a phoenix. This was from a shop on Etsy. It is nice. I just don't like 18 count. Um, it's just not my favourite fabric to work with. I just don't... I don't know, I feel like, but I've already restarted this one once because I was stitching it on a linen and I just, the linen was really fluffy, like little bits of linen were coming off. It wasn't like a linen, it was like a blended linen or something and it was from Pictures Plus and I don't know why it was. Um, it was just super flap, fluffy and super flappy and super movie and I just didn't, didn't like the fabric so I restarted it on 18 count and I really should have known not to start on 18 count because I don't like 18 count so we'll see we'll see what happens might get worked on might not get worked on all I know is I have 200 stitches on this one so it'll be fine uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is a 
another one that I started with people. And I say I started. Before I tell you what it is, see if you can see, see if you can guess what it is and put your comment down below. Oh, and I'm turning into one of those people. Like, put your comments down below, guys. Guess what it is. Guess what pattern it is just by, like, my 20 to 30 stitches that I've done on this project. Um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be unashamedly that person. <laughs> but, yeah, I will say it's a mirabilia. And it's a mermaid. So, with those two clues, and this 30 stitches, what project am I working on? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's just ridiculous. I can't even call this a start, guys. Like, I just... <laughs> it's definitely not a whip. It's a start, but it's not a whip, guys. <laughs> it's just not a whip. Um, I will put more. I will put more stitches on that eventually. Um, I'm not going to tell you what it is. You have to guess. This one is my Hade, and I've done a lot more on this Hade, and it's Western Express by John Bradley. Um, it is a retired chart now, and I've I've done it. There's stitching up here as part of the sky. But I'm just in like confetti hell, <laughs> like serious confetti hell in these mountains. The effect looks amazing, but there's like 40 colors just in those mountains and trees. And I'm just not enjoying it. And it's on 18 count. And as we all know, I don't like 18 count. So we'll see. It does need to like get stitched on. I just need to grow up and stitch on it. I think what I'll do is I'll switch to how I'm stitching my other hade, the hade that I started this year, and I'll go square by square, which I call the Sammy J method. And that's how I'll do it. This is the Sammy J, Jessie, Marie method. Um, I think it's just a lot easier to tackle the confetti that way. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Um, anyway, the next one has ha actually had quite a bit of progress on it. It's Potion Keeper. It can be found on Etsy at Lola Lotta Shop. This little dragon's super cute. I'm about to enter Backstitch Nightmare on this one. But do you know what? The Lighthouse Keeper one came out so nice. I can't wait for this one to actually get done. Like everything, it's got cat fur all over it because two cats. So cute. That won't take too much to finish either. That might be a finish that stitch December one. There's that pattern. So, whoops. The next one I'm going to show you is my new Hade, which is this way around. Um, it's Dinosaur Museum. I don't know who the artist is. I've done maybe like half a percent on this one. I kind of like the way it's turning out, not going to lie. I don't like Hade as a company anymore. I think some of their practices are a bit dodgy. Um, but I have been in love with this dinosaur picture for ages. So that's what I'm, I decided to stitch up. Uh, you're going to start seeing all my whips piling up. That's fine. Completely fine. That goes with a whip. That goes with a whip. Um, the next one I'm going to show is my conversion of Rose of Sharon, who looks like this. 
and that's what I'm, I've am i currently done. I'm converting her to be in a blue dress. She is on, I don't know what fabric she's on. I know it's picture this class. I don't know. Probably Wren. Maybe. But yeah, that's that's where I am with that one. So much stuff, guys. Um gonna put that and that there so I don't lose it. So the next one I'm going to show you once I take off the pattern is Shakespeare's Fairies. Um, I started this with quite a few people. I, I don't know who they all were. Um, but that's where I am with that one. So my fabric is Dark Side of the Moon. Yeah, by Col Colour Cascades. And I do love her fabric. It's amazing to stitch on. I just wish she was more transparent, had better customer service, and a shorter dyeing time. And I get it, dyeing takes a long time, but at the same time, half a year to three months, three months to half a year, like that's, it's not great customer service. And not telling, not giving updates, that's not great customer service, let's face it. And you wanted to be a professional dyer, so you should have, Whatever, I'm not getting in, into it. Um, I'm so rude. So the next one I'm going to show you, I don't have a picture of, so hopefully I will put a picture up for you. It's called Dinosaurs Part One. And I've, I started this the other day and I'm just down the bottom. So you can see the Spinosaurus starting to take life. There are a lot more like different types of stitches in this one than I thought there would be. And I'm, I'm actually really enjoying this one. Um, it's on Colour and Cotton Sandstone 20, uh, 32 Lugana. And it's, it's just really nice. It's just really nice to stitch on. It's a nice pattern. Um, yeah, it, it was nice. It's on Etsy somewhere. I started like doing the stitch and button method, but in a very messy way. So this is one of my floss cards for the next whip, which is here. This is Amaralis by Nora Corbett. She will look like this eventually. She's looking like this at the moment. Um, she's blending in a little bit with the fabric. I'm hoping that stops. Like, I'm hoping it's not as blendy in better lighting. My lighting's not great today. We're apparently supposed to be having thunderstorms. I'm like sweating because it's so humid and I have the aircon off. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say for that. So still going guys this is ridiculous the next one the next one is ivy by nora corbett i really like the the pixies uh, ooh. i think it goes this way so that's where i'm up to on that this is on lemonade by color and cotton which is a lovely fabric to work with. They do really well. Um, okay, and now we get to what will be my main focus for Finish That Stitch December. And it's dirty. That's not good. And it has cat fur everywhere. Bloody cats. Um, it's... I... Not Ivy, Violet. It's Violet by Nora Corbett. 
I have the bottom completely done, I believe, apart from maybe some beads. I have taken out all of the beads on her so far um, because I didn't want to do beading. I just didn't want to do beading. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm quite happy with how she's going. Oh my goodness, there's more cat fur. Um, I think I just have her wings to do. And then she will be basically done. So there she is. She is on... I want to say Lavender Fields by... Pulse Stitches. I think that's who it is. That's actually really nice. This breeze is actually really nice. Um, but yeah, she's, she's, that's the back, by the way. Not that bad. Um, so that's that one. Then we have second last whip. I don't think I'm missing any this time. Second last whip is Anzac. By Long Dog Samplers. When I first got this, this was a gift from Sammy, from Sammy J Stitches. Um, it's an amazing gift. When I first got this, I stitched exclusively on it for about three weeks, and then I switched on to something else. I need to outline the sails. It's on coffee and tea dyed fabric as well. It's supposed to represent the earth, like the dirt in Australia. Um, and originally I was going to do it all in... I think it's 829, 823, might be 823, because I have a lot of that colour. I don't know why I just do. Um, but then I decided to incorporate some other colours in, and I, I actually really like it. You can see the little crab biting or nipping the turtle's butt, um, which is just a really cute little detail in it. Um, but I haven't stitched on this one for a while. I do love it, and I love that it can be on, um, be used on Pattern Keeper. Okay. Um, I don't know if I will keep the Tia Roa on the platypus. I might take that out. Just because, it sounds really bad. It just doesn't mean anything to me. So I might just take it out fall down and then last but not least we have the embroideress who is this one whoops who has a gorgeous blue dress which I'm super excited to stitch she is on 28 28 count Lugana in Snow Shower by Sunny Dyes Fabrics. And I know my friend Vicky from Vicky Reading and Stitching, she absolutely loves Sunny Dyes Fabrics. I don't know, I just... Like, it's pretty, but what I ordered wasn't necessarily what I got. So this one on the website comes up with having, like, little white dots all over the a blue and black background kind of like snow falling or like stars and I basically just got splodges of white paint dotted over the fabric so I'm like I have I bought another two pieces from them and I'm just not just not in love with them or as obsessed with them as Vicky basically which, you know, we all have different preferences and I can say that and she can't, she doesn't need to get upset and because we're all adults and, you know, we get along because we're friends. Um, but yeah, I've just started the border. This is, this is 500 stitches. Um, so yeah, I, I really do actually like working on this one. And I like these frames. I think they're just the J. Edmonds frames. Um, some people think they're like 
the cheap and nasty frames, but I don't know. They fit my purpose. They're not too expensive. They're not too heavy for my Lowry stand. So I quite like them. I only have two at the moment. Um, I think I will keep with Q-snaps just because Q-snaps are easier to store. Particularly when you've got projects on them. Um, but yeah, that is all my whips. I'm under an hour. I'm not going to keep talking because I don't want to get myself in trouble. Um, I hope you all have a fantastic day. I hope 2020 gets better for everyone. We've just come out of stage two lockdown, stage four lockdown in Victoria where I live. Um, and like while I'm not doing as much as I would like to, um, I've been feeling quite run down and just like honestly a bit depressed with the whole situation and with some things that have been going on um, and very stressed about work because work's been insane <laughs> um, but I really hope 2020 but 2020 hasn't been my worst year you know um, and honestly, like, being locked down, being able to work from home has been so much better than traveling to work every day. Um, so, yeah, um, hopeful of it. I mean, fingers crossed we come out of this by Christmas and we look, you know, things start getting better. Um, yeah. So I didn't do this on the last video, but I'm going to. My three things that I'm grateful for, I'm going to keep them stitching related this time because cross stitch and this is predominantly a stitching thing. So, and because it's easier, because I can think of three things off the top of my head. Um, so the first thing that I'm grateful for is virtual stitches. Being able to log on to Zoom and just sit and listen to people talk or, you know, interact with them myself. And I'm, I'm a bit of a shithead sometimes. Like, I tease Victoria Gable like nobody's business. But she gives it back to me, so that's fine. Um, like, it has been really helpful through the last eight, ten months that we've been in lockdown. Um, it's been, it's, it's been just kind of good to be able to have them on in the background as well. Sometimes, don't tell work this, but I will log on while I'm at work and I'll just listen to them as I work. It gives me a sense of, oh, I'm back in the office because there's people talking about stuff around me and I can just, it, it, it helps me concentrate sometimes. Um, there's been a little bit of drama with it, but you know, different personalities, some people have, some people lack the inability to grow up or show compassion um, or to understand things from other people's points of view, but you'll get that with every kind of group. Um, it's a really good group on at the moment, it's really nice, I'm really enjoying it, so yeah, number one thing I'm grateful for is virtual stitches. Number two thing I'm grateful for stitching wise is, what am I grateful for? Um, I'm, I'm probably grateful for the fact that I have a stash that I can just kind of go in and look at and play in when I'm not feeling like stitching. Um, like I can go in and organize my fabric and I can go in and I can go through my patterns and I might find something that goes, Ooh, stitch me. And then I can stitch and then my stitch bugs back. So that's good. Um, and then the third thing I am grateful for that is stitching related. I said it'd be easier to do stitching related things. And now I'm just like coming up in a complete blank. Um, 
So the number three thing that I'm grateful for, for stitching or within stitching around surrounding stitching is I organize, I reorganized all my threads. I was like living in Tupperware containers for each project and that just, it wasn't working. I couldn't find threads that I needed for new projects. I like, it just wasn't, it just wasn't working. So I put my threads all together in two big boxes in little Ziploc bags and then they're in number order so if I need a 900 thread I just go to the 900 section and I just like look it's so much easier it's so much more organized um, and then obviously what I've started doing is putting together floss cards and I'm just I'm honestly just putting like one length one of my lengths of thread onto these floss cards unless I look at the pattern and I'm like that has a lot of that color like Amaralis has lots of this color and lots of this color and lots of this color so I have more than just one length um, but it's, it's just made it so much easier and a lot less messy as well like I was starting to spread out through my lounge through my kit like just everywhere um, and we don't have room for me to do that so yeah that's what I'm grateful for there um, Anyway, hopefully it won't take me as long to do this again. Um, I was considering whether or not I'd just like completely stop and just not tell anyone. But at the same time, like I felt like filming one today and there have been times where I felt like filming one, but my dad's been home or my mum's been home or my brother's been home. But now my brother's got a job. He's not going to be home during the day. And I will be working from home, hopefully even once we go back to work, like, back working in the office I'll be working from home at least like one two days a week so it should be easier it's just if I'm not stitching there's kind of no point showing you anything because it's like look guys I did one stitch in a month Woo! Um, one of the challenges that I might be joining next year though will have like you have to show a minimum of a certain amount of stitches per week or per month so that might help me there because I'm quite good when I'm like I have to do it because I have to do it that sounds bad stitching is for fun stitching is enjoyable um stitching is not the be all and end all like I know we love it guys but come on we do all have lives outside of stitching um yeah be kind to everyone be grateful for what you have you're more entitled than you know it really um yeah that's all I have to say. I'll see you next time. Bye.